It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So last week I showed off the premiere, I suppose, for the uh, 17 people who were able to make it for the premiere of the Downbubble Aluminium Prototype Keyboard. And today's video is basically an update of where that project is, where the status of the case is, and everything else surrounding that. Because, well, you know, if you've got something on a roll, you might as well take it to where you can while it's on a roll until it stops being on a roll. And right now, it has kind of stopped, but uh, there's not much we can really do about that. So, let's switch down to the desktop and have a look. Now, the first thing that I want to sort of talk about with this is, and I kind of didn't really show that last time, I believe, is that the sheer size and scale of this keyboard is not that significantly larger than a full-size keyboard. So here is a full-size, it's my Philco Magis Touch 2, and it is a keyboard that is renowned for having very slim case edges here. You'll see there's not a lot of excess, so it's not particularly big as far as full-size keyboards go, and if I'm putting my hands here edge to edge, you'll see there's a little bit of a gap here, but it's not that much. So we still have practically almost every single key that is on the full size keyboard here, but it's, foot it's fitting within almost the same footprint for its width. What we do lose, of course, is the depth because we're kind of adding a lot of extra depth to the board. So if I line that up there, you'll see there's there's a good size extra here. Now, of course, if you've got a very small sort of table depth, then that might be a challenge for you. But if that's not an issue, then the width itself is not going to make it any worse. But it would provide potentially more comfort factor than anything else. So I'm just going to take that off the table now. So last time, it was just the case by itself, the aluminium part, and this time what you're seeing is a plywood base, and it's a 10 millimeter plywood base. So if I'm just gonna flip that up, you'll see it right there. It's pretty hefty. It's marine ply, it's the stuff that you're gonna use when you're doing flooring, um, especially in timber construction. So it's very, very heavy duty. It's very, very strong and um, I am sure it, it pairs very well with the strength of this one inch slab of metal here. I pretty much put it on top of the piece of ply that I had, I clamped it down, I traced it, and then I used a jigsaw to basically cut it. What you will see is that it is not perfect. It doesn't 100% match up with the case, but that's because the jigsaws are a little bit wobbly. They're not exactly the most accurate and clean of cutting devices. So it was enough to get this shape that I needed it to be to fit and what I did was I tapped each of the holes through because they were two and a half mil designed for threaded taps whereas I used a three mil bit to drill straight through and then into the ply board so I could put in some plugs. So what I've got down here underneath is I've got some M3 threaded sockets basically with a, uh, a flat flange and I was able to drill the hole a little bit bigger because they take a four mil hole for the actual piece to go through into and that enabled me to run the M3 bolt through now the through three millimeter hole and screw it in to attach the base. So that in itself is complete. What I have done to the plywood is because you can see it's kind of got a, a bit of a sheen to that in the reflection and the dark color is I've emptied probably a third of a can of acrylic clear coat, matte acrylic clear coat, I didn't have gloss, to sort of just seal that in to protect it a bit and give it a bit of resistance. And what I can do now is I can put some bump on feet on the bottom as well, simply because this ply material, because it's construction grade for flooring, uh, it's not super smooth. It's smooth enough that I'm not gonna give myself, you know, splinters and whatnot, but uh, if I was to put it on, say, a desk mat, it would damage the surface of the desk mat. On a flat surface, it's not really that big a deal. 
I have taken sandpaper to this and I've deliberately sort of given it, you know, movement so that it's, as you can see in the reflection, it's, it's a bit scuffed up, it's a bit sort of worn in. But the reason why I've chosen to do that is I really do not like fingerprint magnets and this, if it was polished, would be one. And two, it adds to the feel and theme of what I was originally after, which was something that was going to be military, which was going to be industrial grade. So this would fit right in with like a workshop, something that's heavy duty, something that's well worn in, well used, well loved. And I was really, really chuffed when I put these bolts in because look how well they fit in. My, my actual design and measurements with the M3 bolts to the M3 bolt standards was, was spot on. The actual heads of these fit in beautifully. Now I think the reflection is probably making it hard, but you can see there's practically no gap on any of these socket, these hex socket bolts that are fitting all the way around. Okay, and, and I really like how that looks. Now you might not like that, but that's okay. Personal preference, of course, my design for me. Um, and yeah, super, super happy with that. Now, there was two issues. There was two issues that we encountered when I first unboxed it. And the first one was that the cable port was insufficient. So the solution was I hand filed that sucker. <laughs> and you can see how much I took off there. So what you can see there is that slightly purpley mark which was from the, the marker pen. I filed it all the way down by hand and my daughter's just turned on the fan. Uh, but there's not really much more I can file because on the other side of that is actually where the three and a half mil plate starts right there. So that's as far as I can reasonably file that. And that does actually give clearance for most of the cables that I have, but some of the thicker cables, it is a bit of a tight wiggle to get in. Um, so that was, that was the first issue. And the second issue was that the pins from the microcontroller was actually contacting the underside of the case in this area here. And I said, well, you know, I could potentially mill out that area in future revisions, but that wasn't something that I could do in this one. So instead, it was more of a, a change on the PCB. Now this is the same PCB that I used in the other video, but now what I've done is I've taken it off the headers, I've desoldered the headers, and I've actually installed the controller using diode legs. So what I've done there is I've actually inserted the, the spare bits of leg from diodes that you can see that have already been put on the board, and then I've soldered them in and it's sitting pretty much as low as it's ever going to get. It is, it is flat and flush against the PCB itself on this side. And you'll notice on the other side, I've got some tape here, but that's just more of a just in case. But you'll see it is so flat that even with the tape, you can't really see, there's no bumps on it. It's actually flatter than the diode soldering that I've got here. And I know the diode soldering is already quite low and it's not contacting the case from what I can tell. Well, at least it better not be. If it is, I guess we'll find out and um, I will be a very cranky person. <laughs> at least none of them look like they're contacting and it didn't feel that way when I'd put it in. Now, the fitment here and what we sort of looked at um, on that gap now should not be an issue. Of course, I could take this apart, but there is 13 bolts and without a power tool with an appropriate um, Allen key on it, I have to use this and it's a pain. So I'm not going to do that because that's just a lot of time. <laughs> but if we, if we actually have a look at the height of the components in here, then, uh, well, you can sort of, well, maybe I can use, um, mm, just thinking how I can, how I can represent that. I don't think the camera is going to show that because it's not kind of in the right plane. But if I put the PCB right against the bottom, you'll see that the black bit is still got the gap 
to the actual hole that I milled out and that means that's about how much clearance I have for this plastic housing from the actual ply board itself. So there's plenty of clearance for this kind of design. Naturally, you know, I could go towards a onboard component design. I'm just not quite there yet. So I mentioned that this has kind of come to a, a halt at the moment. It's stalled and the stall is I do not have switches. I don't have switches at the moment. I do have some keycaps that I've got now, which I'm hoping to put on and then I'll fill in the extras for the bottom row from my grab bag collection. But my major hold up right now is switches and what I've decided is I wanna get some box pinks. So the box pink switches, if you're not familiar with them, sit between the box white and the box jades in terms of their click bar thickness. It's a, a medium thickness click bar. And I wanna support my local vendor, which is Daily Clack. So I'm waiting for Daily Clack to get them into stock before I purchase them from Daily Clack to be able to finish building this prototype. So that's why this is delayed. How long that's gonna be, I don't know, but I'm not in a super duper rush everything takes its own time and we'll get there in the end. So there you have it. There is the current status of this project. Now, yes, this bottom piece can be definitely replaced with something else. Hardwood, plastic, acrylic, resin cast, concrete, you know, aluminium, whatever you feel like. It could be whatever thickness you want depending on the length of the hardware. So I've got 30 millimeter bolts. It's three mils from the top. It's 25 thick plus 10, so it's 35 in total, but because it's three mil from the top, the 30 mil means there's a bit of a two mil gap. The plugs themselves are eight mil, so it's a very tight sort of fitting tolerance and construction that I've chosen here because I knew I had 10 mil plywood here. But if you want thinner, then you would basically have to order you know, like 25 mil, but it would only give you two mil of actual threaded grip, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, however you want to run it, unless if you want to go the opposite way, which is just as possible, is if you were to tap this with a thread and use say like a countersunk screw or bolt, then you can run the countersunk this way through the bottom into the bottom of the case. It just means the top's going to be exposed Maybe you can just buy some of these M3s and tap a very short thread and use a very short screw just to put it in for the looks and that would work as well. Um, yeah, pretty happy. It's just going to take a little bit of time before I can get the switches, then I can put it together and I'll have kind of a wrap up and a talk about where it's going to go next. Now, here comes the fun part, which is I actually have a second one of these. Um, I have a second one. That's 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 as much as I need to say. I am putting it out there to the community that if you are interested in having a prototype version, right? So it doesn't come with the base. It doesn't come with the hardware. It hasn't been modified. It hasn't been anything. It is still wrapped in foam and paper. I've literally taken out to check it that it was produced correctly and wrapped it back up again. Um, I'm not going to disclose how much it is, but if you're interested in having a unique prototype board and you've got the cash to splash, I can furnish you with everything that I have here except for the bolts and the base and you can put it together however you like. And, and know that you've got definitely a unique keyboard from the community. Um, the reason why I'm offering it up for sale is so it can help with the next revision of this design um, and maybe take it closer towards actually offering it as a full-blown interest check, not a group buy, because obviously you've got to do the interest check right uh, for the community to see if there is any more value in doing more work with it. So there you have it. 
down bubble, one more step towards an interest check and a fully working keyboard. Thank you very much for checking out the video. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who's given me amazingly positive support and feedback on the layout, the design, the look, and just encouragement in general. Uh, I do want to say thank you to the people who've inquired about purchasing the prototype and I fully understand everybody who's kind of asked for the price and had kind of gone, all right, you know, I, I really like it, but it's a little bit out of reach and I fully, fully understand because it is a full-size keyboard that is machined. Plus the shipping from Australia is pretty killer. Uh, but if you've got the inclination, hit me up. You can contact me through any of the board podcasts channels, um, you know, YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, Slack, Discord, and uh, we can potentially have a chat. So thanks very much. Uh, don't forget we've got our podcast and our Instagram. You can find all the details in the description below. So as usual, until next time, happy clacking.